What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you don't know me yet, my name is Scotty Scheller. I'm the content creator and chef here for North Star Bison. If you're watching this during the holiday season, it's the perfect time for this breakdown. But even if it's not the holidays, this is perfect year round. Today we're breaking down the three prime rib roasts. We have bison, we have elk, and we have beef. And at the end of this, I'm going to show you how to cook them. So let's get started. Prime rib roasts are one of those cuts that you do not want to skimp on the fat. Because that fat's going to give it so much flavor and texture in the end. I think everybody's had a traditional beef prime rib before. But if you want to expand your palate a little bit this year, try one of the other options. Let's start with bison. Bison is actually super lean compared to beef. But funny enough, the bison prime rib I got has incredible marbling on it this year. Like I said, bison is typically not as fatty as beef, but you can guarantee when you get a cut of bison from us, you're gonna get some great marbling in that. Bison's got a very interesting taste to it. It's almost like a very nutty beef, and I'm a massive fan of it. Now moving on to elk. Elk's gonna be your leanest cut, but it's got this awesome fat cap on it. It's also gonna be the one that we're cooking today. So if you're looking for a less fatty option this year, just go with elk. Elk's got a very unique taste to it. The way I would describe elk is a very sweet meat. It does have some nuttiness to it, and just a little bit of game, but not gamey in a bad way. It's just got a very unique, distinct flavor to it. I personally think that elk is gonna be the most nutritious meat that you're gonna find as well. Now moving on to your beef prime rib. I think we all know the classic beef prime rib. Extremely fatty, extremely dense, but when you cook it right, it just falls apart in your mouth. The cool part about prime rib roast is you can cook up so many different ways. You can pop them in the oven. If you have a pressure cooker, you can do it that way. But I'm gonna do it in the traditional sense and we're just gonna throw it in the oven and roast it. But with prime rib, I can't stress enough that it is a time consuming process. Time consuming in the sense that you wanna start it the day before you actually actually cook it. I think we've talked enough about the different types of prime rib that you can get from us at North Star Bison. So let's show you how to prep one. So like I said, today we're going to be using the elk prime rib and you can just see that that fat cap is amazing. We're not going to remove any of this. It's also got a great amount of fat underneath it as well. And the prep time is extremely simple. All you want to do is find a very coarse seasoning rub and make sure you heavily coat. What this is going to do over the next day is called dry brining. Basically what's going to happen over the next 24 hours is all of this salt is going to sink into the meat. So you're not just flavoring the top layer, you're actually flavoring the entire roast. So you wanna be extremely generous with this. Now we're gonna flip it over and do the same to the other side. One thing I found about roasts over the years is as they cook, a lot of times they're gonna release this fat cap and we don't want that rolling up. So what we're gonna do is take some butcher's twine and we're gonna roll it together to make sure that that doesn't happen. All right, she's wrapped and ready to go. Now we're just gonna throw it on a roasting pan, put it in the refrigerator overnight, and just let it do its thing. So the next thing you'll see, it'll be tomorrow, and we'll be ready to cook this guy. All right, so 24 hours in the refrigerator, and now we are ready to start cooking. I took this out about an hour and a half ago to let it come up to room temperature just a bit. As you can see, you're not gonna see a lot of salt crystals on there. You're just gonna see the garlic and the pepper and all of that. That basically means that we did exactly what we wanted to do on this dry brine, is all of that salt has now soaked into the meat and it's got a ton of flavor. At this stage, I'm gonna add a binder, some more seasonings, and then we're gonna throw it in the oven. A lot of people use horseradish here. I'm not a big fan of horseradish. You can also use a compound butter if you'd like to, but today we're just gonna use mustard as the binder and then we're gonna throw on some seasoning on top of that. Now that we're fully coated, we're gonna go in with our seasoning blend. And this is gonna be salt, pepper, garlic, and onion. Now this next part is optional, but I do recommend everybody invest into a meat thermometer, just if you're gonna be making roasts or steaks or anything, it's really easy to throw one of these in there, connect it to your phone, and then when it's ready to go, it's ready to go and you're gonna hear an alarm. There's a ton of different kinds, but I'll link the one that I use down in the bio. Get that guy all the way into the middle and we are ready to go. This is gonna go into an oven at 250 degrees. I'm gonna say for something this size, it's gonna be about two hours, two and a half hours, but that's why you have this little spike in there to tell you when it gets up to about 120 degrees, that's when I'm gonna pull it out. But let's say you don't have one of these and you have a regular thermometer, it's fine. Just make sure that you keep checking it about every 30 minutes to 45 minutes because you don't want this to go over 120 degrees internal. All right, just at about two hours, we are at 120 degrees internal temperature. Now I'm gonna let this rest for 30 minutes, baste it with a little oil and throw it back under the broiler for about five to 10 minutes to get that crisp. Then we're gonna let it rest and slice into it. All right, so we've officially rested for about 30 minutes. Now we're gonna throw a little bit of oil on this guy, get it back under the broiler for about 10 minutes to give it a little bit of a crisp and be ready to go. So you can use any kind of fat for this. You can use butter, you can use ghee, you can use duck fat. Today, I'm just gonna go in with some avocado oil because it's a high smoke point oil. 10 minutes and we're gonna see how that crisp looks. And now the moment we've been waiting for. That is perfect. Well, there you have it. Super easy process and an amazing meal for any occasion. But talk to me in the comments. Let me know if you try this recipe and let me know how it comes out. And if you do make this, tag us on Instagram, at North Star Bison and at Scotty Scheller. We're gonna have so many more of these recipe videos coming, but if you wanna see a specific one, please let us know as well. But guys, thank you so much for watching through this video. If you did like it, leave a like, share it, leave a comment. It really helps us out. But if it is a holiday season for you, happy holidays to you, your family, and your friends. So I'm gonna go enjoy this, but we'll talk to you soon.